Well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zaratustra, your host. And today we're going to talk about self-mastery. Awareness becomes aware of itself. And um, before we, uh, for those of you who are here for the first time, I'd like to welcome you. Um, Keep in mind that uh, we're forced to mute everybody because of devices making funny noises. So, but uh, we're going to do our meditation. After the meditation, there's a talk. Uh, you're welcome to write on the chat box or if uh, you're on Zoom, you can wave at me and um, I'll unmute you and you can ask me your question. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions to the best of my ability. Um, for the moment, we're going to do an active meditation. Uh, last week we did an active meditation. We're going to do another one this week. I uh, haven't been doing active meditations for a long time. Uh, I took a break from it on, on, at the academy. And now, the past couple of weeks, I've been feeling like doing, doing some sort of active meditation. What we did last week was a grounding meditation. And uh, we're going to do the same thing this week again. So everyone's going to, I'm going to ask you to stand up. And uh, let's see, I'm going to do the same thing here. Am I in the camera, uh, Amir? No, you're not. Do I need to go further back? Yeah, that's good. That's, that's good. good. So, because, I, yeah, I don't want to mess around with the, uh, the camera. Um, so what we're going to do is, this is a grounding meditation. You want to imagine, uh, use your power of visualization, imagining that from your torso down, you are having roots. Your legs, this is, this, you're like a tree, like an old tree. And you've been here for a long time. And this tree is really established on the earth. And from down here, you have roots going in the planet. And uh, the purpose of this meditation is that we get grounded. And even though the upper part of the tree may be shaking because of wind or storms but the lower part of the tree it's from the torso down it's really rooted to the ground so even though the upper part may move but the lower part is very well situated now you're going to imagine that with every breath you take you take a deep breath you can even use your knees to just kind of get in the groove so you take a deep breath you bring the prana of the earth through your roots, through your root chakra. So the energy of the planet, you can imagine that it's green, the prana, since the vegetations are all green. So you just bring it in and then Inhale and then you exhale. So you inhale and then you exhale. So let's do it one more time. Inhale and then exhale. Now, I would also like you to imagine that when you're breathing in the prana and breathing out, it's going up in a form of a spiral. So it's an energy that is moving up, connecting every chakra to each other, and then it goes out, the energy goes out from your crown chakra up to the space. So in a way you're a conduit in between the planet Earth and the space. So the energy of the planet comes through your roots it comes to your root chakra and it begins to spiral all the way up 
and it goes from your crown chakra up. Uh, this is a powerful meditation. It gets you really grounded. So let's try it again. Inhale. Exhale. The energy comes back and then again you bring it in and it goes out. All right, now I would like you to, so we did it a couple of times, you got a hang of it. Now what we're going to be doing is you're going to act as if you're a generator and this generator, uh, it's like a pump. You know, when you use a water, they use a pump to suck water out of a swimming pool or a pond. So it's pulling in, pulling out. So you're going to be pulling the prana from the planet, the energy of the planet, which we have uh, infinite amount of energy. And you're bringing this energy into your body. And this, this prana is going to be healing you and it's going to connect all your chakras to each other and it's a connector from the the world below to the world above so earth and heaven they're going to be connected so we're going to be going up and down so you're kind of squatting and you're going to make a noise <laughs> And as you're making a noise, you're, you're seeing the prana, the energy, this green, powerful healing energy is entering into your body, comes to your torso, and then it begins to spiral up. So, we're going to start. Keep squatting, go up and down and pull the energy in and keep seeing the energy spiraling up from your root chakra all the way up to the crown. <laughs> Keep going up and down 
and keep making the noise, the generator, and pull in and breathe into it. Keep going, don't stop, keep going. Take a deep breath. can come back to your seat close your eyes and just stay in your center and continue doing your gently breathe in and out visualize that you are sucking in the prana of the earth in your body through your roots and as you're sucking it in and you're bringing it in it starts to spiral up
slowly, slowly come back. Come back here. So awareness uh, becomes aware of itself. When we begin to reach the higher level of consciousness and we wake up from the, the dream, a self-awakening mechanism is activated. And what happens is that we appear to wake up and become aware of a secondary reality that exists and it's parallel to the reality that we've been living in. And the ordinary reality that most human beings live in, it's programmed completely, it's robotic, and it's kind of like being in this hypnotism, like you're hypnotized. And from the time you were born, again, depending where you were born, your family, your education, your class, uh, social class, um, the environment, the country, the culture, everything, it forms your psyche and brainwashes you and puts these imprints of a certain way of looking at life. So you have a, it's kind of like um, your perspective is definitely tainted and it's uh, very narrow and and you begin to follow what this program and so let's say overall like if we look back at the past few hundred years uh, until recently that something is shifting and the culture uh, the society starts to change things are changing because of the information uh, is available to us uh, but prior to maybe last 30, 40 years, um, the deal is like, okay, you go to school, you go to college, or if you can, and then you're supposed to get married, and you're having children, and uh, you're working, uh, or you're raising your kids, and then you retire, and you have some retirement time and then you die. I mean, this is the program. And if you are kind of, if you're living outside of this program, then uh, you are not normal. There's something wrong with you. So this has been the rhythm, and everybody pretty much follows the same thing because it's the norm. This is what you're supposed to be doing, and this is what's happening. So it's kind of a robotic thing that you don't even know why you're doing it. But then it comes to a point that you begin the self-awakening uh, happens and you start to wake up. And as you're waking up and enter into, let's say, the spiritual world and you're becoming self-aware, and the questions come, like, who am I? Uh, why am I here on this planet? What's the purpose of living this life? And where am I going to go after I die? What is after death? And so on and so forth. These questions begin to rise. And as you go deeper into the rabbit hole, then your 
awareness starts to expand. Your, your point of view changes. You start looking at life uh, from a broader perspective. And in this transition, as this is happening, uh, what happens is your, your awareness starts to increase. When you get to the higher levels of consciousness, awareness, you have a much broader and uh, expanded awareness, you begin to realize that everything is consciousness. Everything is the spirit. Everything is God. The good, the bad, the ugly, it's all a part of the consciousness. And you begin to realize that nothing exists outside of consciousness. Consciousness is the only thing that there is. So you realize that. And prior to that, maybe somebody's telling you or you read about it somewhere, but now you begin to realize it for yourself. You, you begin to see it that way because you have become a lot more expanded. You have come from this really conditioned way of thinking. You have opened up and you're available and you are not looking at things from your bias point of view, from your, the way you've been programmed to look at stuff and you question things. And a part of this process of awakening in this expansion which is happening for you is you begin to self-observe and you may be taking some self-awakening um, books you maybe you went to your a psychiatrist or psychologist or you find some teachers you're going into the spiritual market you start shopping around checking different things uh, Buddhism, Hinduism, uh, Kabbalah, Sufism, you're checking things out and seeing what's going on. And some of the information comes to you and some of the books, workshops, teachers that you encounter, they are uh, doing self-observation. And uh, so you begin to look at yourself and you're looking at your own behaviors and becoming aware. And if you're really sincere and you're really on it and you're really investigating, uh, you do the self-awakening work. You start to look at yourself. And it's very, very scary to do that because we're pretty much in a culture generally that likes to point fingers at other people and and we keep other people responsible and uh, it's their fault or it's the government's fault or if it's the corporation evil corporations fault for doing something or somebody else betrayed you and they screwed you over and they lied to you or they stole from you or whatever they've done to you it's always pointing finger at other people. So, and it's very difficult and scary to really turn around and look at yourself. And, and self-observe and see what's going on, what kind of screwed up patterns I have inside myself. What is it that I keep repeating uh, and I don't want to look at and I'm pointing finger at my partner or my parents or my kids that it's their fault and they've done something wrong to me rather than I start looking at myself. And that is where awareness become, starts to become aware of itself. Uh, and uh, let me elaborate on that one too. In the uh, very uh, basic form or state of being, 
the awareness is the consciousness, uh, spirit, God. Again, I'm throwing different names to see what works for you. Is not aware of itself. It simply is. So, in the very uh, nucleus, in the very uh, essence of of it, it simply is. It's like, it's here, it's present, it's very still, and it's very silent, it's very calm. There's nothing goes on in the center of the universe, as well as the center of yourself. So, awareness is here. It's all awareness. There's nothing else. But it's not aware of itself. It simply is. We can, to better understand this, is let's say that you're in very, very deep meditation. Those of you have been working on yourself and you arrived at this place within yourself that when you do meditation, you dive within yourself and you become very, very quiet, very still, And there is no more mind activities. Your mind becomes quiet. And you kind of disappear. You kind of dissolve into the oneness. And let's say, hypothetically, I'm using an example, that you've been doing meditation and you're getting really good at it. And now you have gone deep inside, maybe you reach a state of samadhi and you are in this total oneness place and you disappear into the being. And let's say this has a period of time. So there is you having your mind activities, there is a person and you can report. You can say like what you're doing, how you're feeling, what's going on with you. And then you reach this point and you go into meditation. And from here to here, let's say half an hour, one hour, 15 minutes, whatever, you disappear. You're in deep silence into this complete state of oneness with existence. And then after, let's say, a half an hour, one hour, you, your mind comes, your thought activities reappear, and the sense of you, a person that you always experience, returns. It comes back. And you become a person again. You become who you are right now. Then you look back at that period and you say to yourself or you tell me or you tell your friend, Zarathustra, wow, I don't know what happened. I was gone and I was one with God. So you had like a half an hour of completely disappearing. You have no, you, you know you are, you know you were, but you are not anything. You are not a person. You are not meditating. You are not accomplishing anything or you're, you're not in any kind of 
state of saying in that period of time that when you're in that place, there's no, wow, this is cosmic, orgasmic state. I am one with God. You don't say that during that period of time. During that period of time, you dis disappear. The sense of you as a separate person disappears into the oneness. Similarly to this happens when, I mean, there's many different ways that this could happen, but also in deep sleep, when you go into, because they have uh, divided the sleep, categorized sleep in four different levels. Uh, the first level is where the REM Rapid eye movement is at its highest level. And so you have vivid dreams. You sleep, you wake up, and you're tired because you're remembering your dreams. So you were very active in your, in your sleep level and uh, you don't feel rested. Then there is a, the next level that the REM is not as strong as it, it was and you sleep, you wake up a few hours after, you can't remember your dream, but you know you were dreaming. But as soon as you wake up, you forget your dream. You can't remember what you were dreaming. And you're still not very rested. Then you go to the next level that it has a lower level of REM, you sleep, you wake up, you know there was some kind of activities happening, you know you were engaged with something, but you can't remember any of it, but you also know it wasn't a very deep sleep. So you're not 100% rested. Then comes the fourth level of sleep, that you put your head down on your pillow, and six hours after, 45 minutes after, whatever, you wake up and you say, oh my God, I was gone. I was gone, I slept so deep and there is no recollection, you don't remember anything. And you don't even remember or you don't know you were sleeping. You just put your head down and you were gone. And a few hours after you wake up, you feel extremely energized. Even though if, even if it's 45 minutes of sleep, you still feel extremely energized. Or if it was five hours or eight hours, whatever it was. And you, you tell yourself, oh my God, I, I was gone. I feel very well rested. I feel very energetic. So what happened is, again, in this period of time, that you are, your brain, your mind is active. You are engaged in the world of the thoughts with the world surrounding you, whatever is your reality. You're very much engaged with it. And then comes to the point that you sleep and you go into this deep place and everything is gone. Everything disappears. So we have this period from here to here that you have disappeared. Same as when you're meditating and you're in a deep meditation and you disappear. So what I'm referring to is the awareness, the grand total awareness, the spirit, God. In it, it's in original state. It's just pure consciousness. And it's not aware of itself. It's resting. It's consciousness in a state of rest. 
It is, it's vast, it's infinite, but it's not aware of itself. Okay? This is that sitting with you. Can you, are you, can you accept that? Can you just handle it for now? I want to make sure we're on the same page with each other. You don't have to agree with me. But I just want you to pay attention to this and see if it's sinking in for you. Pure consciousness, pure power, vastness, but not aware of itself. It simply is. And what happens is we are, we are that. We're this pure potential vastness, power of the being. It's like ocean and this, the ocean is completely flat. It's vast ocean, beautiful blue turquoise, but silky smooth ocean and there are no waves on it nothing so then comes a wave a wave arises and then another wave arises so there's movement starts to happen in this ocean and it's like the ocean is awakening so it's creating these waves so we are like these waves are we are the ocean but then when the wave starts to move all of a sudden somebody is being born you see a person being born so that's one wave and then there's another wave and there's multiple waves are happening and what happens is these waves they create an illusion of separation they create it's an optical illusion so it appears that there are different people like and there's different objects so you see millions of different objects for example you're looking at like here is a glass of water so it's that and here is like a remote control so all of these things here is like for example a business card these objects these objects they're simply images they're they're all of them are these waves that they come from the ocean each movement of the ocean creates a wave so each movement of consciousness creates a human being creates an object but all of it all of these objects all of these human beings all of these different things the mountains the forest uh, the cars, airplanes, the buildings, they're all consciousness. All of them are made out of consciousness. Again, I'm going to use the ocean analogy. Ocean starts to create these waves. So these waves they look big, strong, they go up, they come down. And there's thousands of waves happening all the time. The ocean is sometimes could be very rocky. It could be stormy. So it creates all these movements. Same thing is happening here. 
consciousness at rest is what you experience when you go in a deep meditation and there is no brain activities and you go into pure silence and you lose the sense of yourself as a separate person, as a separate entity and you become one with all. That means in that moment you are the flat ocean. You're just the ocean. But then your mind comes and you start thinking, you start sensing your body and then comes this sense of separation, this sense of duality. It comes with it. It's a package. But since in your very origin you're not separated from any of it it's only in in the imagery that it seems like it's separated but it's in the it's in own essence there's no separation it's all itself it's all one entity appearing you know it's like my right hand comes and does this thing and then my left hand comes and does this. So they're dancing with each other. They're playing with each other. But both of them are a part of the body. They're not separated from the body. These both hands and arms are a part of the same person. So the same thing here in your situation when you go in a very deep state of meditation you reach samadhi you become one with god you become one with the spirit which you always are one with it but you're just pure awareness it's just awareness it's not aware of itself it's just is. So that's why when you go into this place deep inside, during that period of time that you're into the deep meditation, you can't say, oh my God, I'm one with God, because there is no you. The sense of you as a separate entity is not there. So it's only the oneness. Same thing when you sleep and you're not dreaming, you go into this place and it's only the oneness. Because when you sleep and you're not dreaming, you're not aware of your body. Let's say you're, lying, you're sleeping with your partner, your sweetheart is in your arms. You're not aware of your sweetheart. Let's say you have a newborn baby and the baby's in his creep and uh, is in the room. The baby disappears. Your home disappears. Everything disappears. There's nothing there. Because you have disappeared. You have disappeared into the oneness. There's no sense of you being separated. That sense is not there. So you are one. So you're in this place of awareness. It's in its pure way. Pure essence. But then, when the mind activities come back and you come out of so-called that deep state of meditation, you, you re-emerge from the vastness of the being into the individual consciousness. You return into a separate entity, a sense of separation. It's never separated. It's always the ocean. Ocean is always the ocean, no matter how many waves ar ar arise 
arise and fall back, all of it is the ocean. So you may see these huge giant waves and they look very scary. But this, the source of it is the same ocean that as you. None of it is different than the other. It just appears to be big and mean and bad. It looks like it. But it's the same as yourself. There's no separation between you and anything else in this existence. All of them, their essence is the same. All of them, the power house is the same power place, a power house. Their source is the same source. So in other words, when you start to realize that, there is no boogeyman. There is no, let's say, the terrorists, let's say, the Illuminati, let's say, evil government, evil corporation, uh, the communists, the Nazis, the aliens, there is no them. They're all you. It's all yourself. And as you're, ex you remember in the beginning I said your mind starts to expand, you start to awaken to the truth of who you are. So this self-awakening mechanism, it begins to trigger, it, it awakens. So everything is consciousness. But it's consciousness in a sleepy way or consciousness is an awakened way. But it's the same consciousness. So it starts to wake up. And as it's waking up, as it's becoming self-aware of itself, it begins to do self-observation. It begins to do self-observation. Now, in this self-awakening mechanism, this is, starts to happen, which has already happened to you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here and you wouldn't be listening to me. Is something has triggered inside you, a lot of times has to do with some sort of trauma, some sort of strong calling, some kind of discomfort, some kind of disagreement with life or the world or your parents or your culture or the government or the way things are. So the self-awakening mechanism is triggered and we begin to wake up. And the wake up, waking up is like, wait a minute, why am I doing the same things as everybody else does? And I'm just going to use this part. I mean, but don't take me wrong. I don't want you to come back and attack me and tell me if I'm against marriage or I'm against having children. I, I don't have anything against any of it because I don't care, but I'm using it as an example because it's a great example of being a robot, of that everybody, general idea of the world is people think, okay, I need to, I'm growing up, then I'm going to get married and I'm going to have kids. And and I don't even know why I'm doing it because everybody else is doing it. That's what everyone do. And this is the way it is and blah, 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 blah. When this self-awakening mechanism starts to kick in, you begin to become aware 
And some of you will not, cho you choose not to go that path because it's like, wait a minute, you stop at your tracks at one point. It's like, why, why do I need to do this? Why do I need to get married and have kids because everybody else is doing it? Wait a minute. I don't want to do that. This is not something I want. Just because the the path is laid out, laid out in front of me and everyone else is doing it, I don't want to do that. So I'm using this again as an example. This is again I'm not anti marriages or anti uh having children. I'm just bringing this for us to use it as an example. That's all it is. So the self-awakening mechanism starts to get activated and you begin to look and become aware of certain patterns that your parents been doing, your culture has been implementing on you and you've been doing it yourself. Then you also, if you go deeper, you begin to, especially if something has happened in your childhood and has created some sort of suffering for you, now you start to look at yourself. You begin, you begin to look at your own behavior, which is a very good place to arrive to. Because a lot of people do a lot of spiritual work. They do shamanism. They do third eye activation. They're, they're expanding. They're doing healing work. But they're not looking at themselves. They're still looking outside at the other world. But not looking within. Not looking at our own some screwed up behavior or pattern or the way we think or... I've encountered a lot of people do shamanism. They, they're great shamans, they're great psychics, they're great healers, but emotionally they're a mess. They get very angry very quickly, they get very jealous, they get uh, all kinds of stuff is because they're not, they haven't put any time looking at their own behaviors their own emotions, how they get triggered, how they react, how they get really frightened, how they, they go into the world of anxiety or fear. So when it comes to self-awakening and mastery, we need to go through these different levels, these different stages of first awakening to a dream, awakening to a pattern that is already predisposed for us and it seems like we don't have a choice and we're just following this path that for thousands of years our ancestors have going through and we're just doing it without any kind of self-awareness. So A, you become aware of that and you say, you know what, this is screwed up and I don't want to do what they've been doing and I don't want to do what everybody else does. Then you start going your own way and you know if you're a kid you're the weirdo you're the weird one because you're different why are you different because you're not doing what everybody else is doing and you are drawn into a different direction you want it doesn't feel right to you something inside you is awakened something inside you has become alert And what happens also is on this path that you're starting to wake up to a screwed up program that everyone's doing and you're becoming aware and you start, your attention starts to go 
inwards and you're looking at yourself and you begin to discover your suffering. And there's a lot of suffering on this path is happening. So you start looking for help of why am I suffering? And a lot of the suffering is related to your childhood, that at your childhood maybe you've been abandoned, uh, you've been with abusive parents, uh, guardians, um, they beat you up, they sexually abused you, they left you, they shipped you from one home to another home, so there's a lot of emotional, psychological damages and scars that are left on our psyche. So now a lot of our behavior is based on what kind of damage has been inflicted on us. So you're persistent, you're keep going on your path, you're not giving up, and you are determined to overcome suffering, you're determined to tackle this problem. So you continue on your commitment on self-awareness path, self-awakening. And you keep going slowly, slowly forward, you enter into the spiritual market, you're taking different courses, doing different work, uh, there's a lot of different stuff out there, and uh, so you're checking things out, and a lot of them are very helpful, a lot of them help you to become self-aware, to work on your issues, and to get over your hang-ups. So your awareness is expanding, you're starting to become more aware, more awake of the patterns, of the screwed up patterns. And what happens a lot of times is you go, you can only go to a certain point. You get to a point and then you hit a wall. And it seems like you can't get over the hump. You've done really well, you, kept, you keep going, 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 but then you hit this wall and you can't get over the hump. And that's where the frustration starts to come, uh, the addictions, uh, the dark side that you're, you're faced because you can't go any more forward, you're stuck and everything starts to creep, creep up on you and show up. And some people call it the dark uh, night of the soul. Um, so you are in this place, you get to this place. And it's a very weird place, it's very dark, it's very confusing, and it's would say it happens to almost all of us. Almost 99% of the spiritual seekers, they arrive at this place and they hit this wall at one point or another. Maybe they hit this wall a couple of times in their lives. And they don't know what to do. They don't know where to go, where to seek help. And they're sincerely trying to, they're struggling, but it sometimes appears that there is no way out. And it's a very scary, very dark place to get into. But in the same token, it's, I would say, it's a very good uh, place to arrive to. And as confusing as it appears to be, and difficult as it is, because believe me, I've been there and I've struggled with it for a long time, and I know that place very well, and it also has a purpose, it also has a function 
that it's a necessity in this path of awakening that you're, you're going through to get to that place. Now, you are more, you're in this deep, dark place that you're stuck. And it seems like there is no light. So what happens is you begin to suffer and suffer more. And a lot of you think about committing suicide, taking your life. You feel like life is meaningless. Uh, there's no hope. There's nowhere to go. It's all bullshit. And you keep spiraling down into the dark place. But something very good comes out of it. What happens, it, it increases your awareness. You're becoming a lot more sensitive. Your senses are pretty sharp because you're suffering. And you may even get stuck into alcoholism or drug addiction, taking pills, putting Prozac or um, all kinds of different things. But something has shifted inside you. Something of value is cooking here. And that is your availability, your openness to the grace. You become very alert and very open to the help, the divine help. Because you're desperate. You have hit the rock bottom and you're in complete desperation. And it doesn't matter if you have, you're coming from your social status, doesn't matter. You have a lot of money, uh, you can travel, you can buy anything you want, uh, you can sleep with anybody you want. Uh, it doesn't matter because everything is meaningless at this point to you. Nothing is really important. Nothing means anything. You don't care. So it's not just lack of finances. For everybody, it's a different story. Some people need to go there because of lack of money and desperation in financial world. Some people have everything and they go there. So now, because you're really suffering and you're so desperate, when the grace comes, means again, with grace, the love, the power of love, the Almighty, of that which is always here, the love of God, the love of the Spirit, the grace, awareness, consciousness, Again, these are words. I'm just pointing out. I'm referring to this place. This place. There's a spark. A spark happens. And all of a sudden, you're ready. So love, God, starts to appear. And... It's like a veil opening up. Very gently, a veil is opening up. This veil opens up. And you're in total darkness. You're totally desperate. You're totally in this place of self-destruction. And you get to see the light. You get a glimpse of it. And... That, in that particular time when this happens, it's being spiritually ripe. And there is a 
this flashlight of love of light that appears, and boom, it gives you this juice, this hope, and this jolt of life. Life reappears. Life comes back. Now. This could be like you found your teacher, you found a book,、uh, somebody touched you, touched your heart. A, you know, a child, a grandmother, someone gave you some love, or something happened. Somehow, existence creates this situation, and awareness that you are. Begins to become self-aware. It begins aware of the power of love, which is within ourselves. Getting a glimpse of the love of existence, which is always here, and in this transition. That you start to see, to feel, because you're so desperate. You're at the bottom, and your ego has been smashed. You know this ego, this sense of me. Look at me, look at me. I'm powerful. I'm big. I'm bad. You know, I can do. I can buy people. I can do this. I can. You know. Have anything I want. I can sleep with anybody I want, and you know everybody is here to serve me. And I don't give a shit about the environment, and I don't care about people or whatever. It's all me, me, me. It's so beaten up, and you're in such a low point in your life that when this little splash of light. Presents itself to you, it pulls the trigger and gives you the life, the prana, the life force comes back into your being, and every cell of your body of your being is like charged positively, and from then on, things start going. Well for you, as as far as your willingness, being attentive to awareness, to love. Now you are different. Now you're paying attention. It's got your attention. So you begin to awaken. The different parts of you starts to wake up. The sleepy parts, it begin to awaken and expand. Is awareness. It starts to because before it was so focused on this me, 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 of this victim. For me, I'm a victim and. I'm disadvantaged, and I'm no good, and I hate myself, and I don't hate everything, everyone. And all of a sudden, the love starts to appear, and awareness, the vastness of awareness, becomes aware of itself. You become aware of. What you become aware of the vastness which is here, rather than you being this person, limited, very focused on an individual which feels separated from everything. Now the awareness is coming, and you're becoming aware of. A greater part of yourself,
that you are not just this thing that you are been thinking and you believe that you are. And in that, a number of different things starts with the right teaching, with the right training. A lot of different things starts to happen. The self-observation process from severe suffering forces you to look inside. And if you're lucky, a number of different things starts to happen is a you begin to realize that wait a minute if I am expansion so this expansion cannot be limited to just a physical body and this physical body is very limited and it's got a time it was born it's going to be living, it rises to its peak, and then it's going to get old, and it's going to die. And you start to become aware of it. And you begin to realize that you're not it. You are aware of a body which is here, and... It's going to have a duration and it's going to die. So you're becoming to, becoming aware of it. Then, in the meantime, you start to become aware of these emotions. That they're just coming very strongly as soon as your partner, you're in a committed relationship and your partner starts to pay attention to another man or another woman. You're off the chart. You're jealous, you're angry, you know. You want to kill, you want to divorce. You want to just throw all the li your life with this person out the window because their attention went somewhere else. So now you're starting to observe your emotions. Self-awareness. Awareness is becoming aware of itself. So it's awakening, your self-awakening. To these patterns that are implemented in you that before were ruling you. And you had no idea. So you went to doctors and you took pills because you get these anxieties, you get these jealousies, you get this anger. But you have no idea because you're blaming it on other people because she went and flirted with another man. That's why I'm angry. Because somebody else caused this anger in you. You're not looking at yourself that you carry a lot of anger. You carry a lot of jealousy. You carry possessiveness because you want to possess. You want people, you want to own, own people. So you're starting to see that. Then you begin to also self-observe and see your mind. If you're lucky, as I was, I was very lucky, very, very lucky, extremely lucky, extremely lucky to come across this teaching of being aware and becoming aware of the thoughts, the thinking pattern, the mind which is all over the place and becoming aware of my mind, becoming aware that I am not my thoughts. I can watch them from the outside. 
I am not the thoughts because I can observe them. If you can observe your thoughts, then you cannot be the thoughts. You have to be somewhere else. You have to be standing outside to be able to look at them. Because if you were your thoughts, you would have never known. Thoughts would be your only reality. You wouldn't be able to be aware of a busy mind. You wouldn't be able to come and say, my mind is driving me crazy. Because you would be the mind. It would be a one-dimensional reality. So, in this process, are you with me? Are you, are you getting this? Yeah? Okay, good. Great. So, in this self-awakening, which actually, on this coming weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's the self-awakening, self-awakening mastery workshop, is all about this. It's all about the recognition of the awareness, becoming aware of itself. It's like there's you here and you are coming outside of yourself and you're mirroring yourself and you're just looking at yourself from the outside objectively. For me to give you the tools to be able to do the same thing that I've done with myself. To be able to look at yourself from the outside, objectively. Not just with the bias and prejudice of looking at yourself and eh, brushing it off and pointing your finger at other people because other people are doing you wrong or they're screwed up or the government is screwed up or Trump is screwed up or Biden blah 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 or the US election is this or our economy sucks or um, no it's just it doesn't matter they're, they're, who, who cares I am the one who screwed up. I need to fix myself. Instead of putting my attention on other people and trying to fix them or fix the system, I am the system. I'm the one who needs fixing, not anybody else. Because there is nobody else. Everybody else is an extension of myself. Everything else is an extension of me. That's what I'm saying. Awareness becomes aware of itself. Excuse me. The self awakening mechanism is triggered. Awareness becomes aware of itself. And the process starts to happen. And you begin to get pulled it pulls you in it sucks you inwards and that's your lucky day because your attention from going in the other world it starts to get vacuumed in inwards 
and you start to explore the inner world and the inner treasure and some of the almost immediate experiences or the goodies is that you start to feeling blissed out. Your depression starts to disappear, your anxiety starts to disappear, your fear starts to go away, you begin to recognize yourself and you start to love yourself. You start to accept yourself and love yourself because you're starting to find it. You're touching it. You're dr drinking it like a juice. And then all of a sudden you begin to see that the quality of life, your life starts to change. And you don't care very much about what is going on in the other world. I'm not saying you're ignorant to it. I'm not saying like if people are dying around you or they're in suffering, you don't feel that. Of course you do because you're expanded. You're very, become very sensitive as you already are. You're sensitive to noise. If it's disturbing noise, you're aware of it. If it's uh, people speaking too loud and they blah, 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 they bother you. If you go to a restaurant and it's too loud, it bothers you because you're, you're expanded. You're conscious. You're consciousness. You're aware. You're not a stupor. Of course you have compassion for other human beings. You would be a robot if you didn't. When I say mind your own business, your attention comes to inner world, it doesn't mean like you're ignorant to the other world. It means you're starting to recognize something very, very valuable within yourself and you start to see that the love that you've been looking for, the love that you came from before you were born is really here inside. It's here right now in this very moment and it's in the presence of this moment reality. It's here. It's not somewhere else. and you begin to dive into it, your mind starts to get quiet, your heart starts to open, and you're diving into this place. And as you're diving more deeper into this place, your story that you've been carrying, this story, your life story, which is very dear to you, and you're really a lot of people hanging on to it, it begins to dissipate. It starts to kind of fall away. It's like far away distant story. It's just irrelevant. It becomes irrelevant. Because you're drinking the love. You're drinking the juice. You're experiencing the love of God more, more, this awareness with yourself, more it's feeding you and you're starting to see, wow. And then you don't care. If somebody's going to come and put a gun in your head and is going to shoot you, you look at him and you see yourself. There's no other. They disappear. Other do not exist anymore. It's only the self. And it's like, whatever, go ahead, shoot, shoot me in the head. Go ahead. Because I'm home, I'm with my beloved. I am just with the ultimate love. She want to shoot me? Are you kidding me? Who are you scaring? I mean, I already got it. I'm with my beloved. 
Now you're going to come and want to put fear in me. Fear doesn't even exist here. Are you very close to it? You can't give up at this point and just go fall asleep. You can't go back to falling asleep. You have to stay on your path. You got to stay committed because it gets more, you know, it's like you're going up this pyramid. So it gets more refined. It gets, the air gets thinner as you get to the top. And there is less real estate here. There's not many people on the top. There's not much room for a lot of people because not everybody's got the bullocks to go all the way. They don't have the balls to do it. They chicken out. But you've come a long way. You can't just give up now because it's tough or rough or whatever. You just got to keep going at it. You just have to stay really focused at it. The prize. Look at the trophy. Look at what you're going to get. Because that prize, that prize that you're going to get to, is the difference maker. Because you're going to find the inner heaven and you're going to dwell there in eternity. There won't be any more suffering. Suffering will disappear forever. So it's worth it. But it requires dedication, it requires training, it requires guidance. Very, very a few, just maybe, I don't know, maybe the history of humanity of trillions of people have come and gone. Maybe a few self-awaken on their own. The rest, they, they need help. They need guidance. And why not use help when it's there? Why not be guided if you can use it? Whatever is available, you have to use that to, to get to, to home, to get to this place, to get to the very top of consciousness, mountain of consciousness, to fully awaken, to fully realize the dream. Wait a minute. This is a dream. I'm not suffering because I'm not into this thing. I'm watching this. And this love, this acceptance, that always I looked for it from the outside, always I begged for it from my parents or my guardians or my partner always begging for a little acceptance and love, you're going to find it here. You're going to recognize it here. That it's always been here. That you are the carrier of it. You're the source of it. Yourself. Right now. Wherever you are. However you look. Whatever shape you have. No matter how old you are, what color skin you got, how much money you have, it doesn't matter. You are who you are looking for. It's you. Any questions? Does anybody... I didn't, I didn't realize I... Talk so, so much. Anyone? Questions? Comments? Okay, I'm looking at the chat box. 
All right. Can you explain the quantum and quantum healing? Uh, thank you for your message. Uh, Tammy, Tamine? Can, can you talk to me? I don't know who that is. Um, that is a subject for another day because if I want to get into it, that's, that's going to take another two hours. So I can't get into that one. I'm sorry. Let's talk about it another day. But regarding what we talked, anybody has any comments or questions? No? Okay. Cool. Hi Ingun, are you are you trying to get my attention? No? Okay. Where are you where are you from? I'm trying to unmute you so we can speak. What country are you from? Hi. I don't know, I can't hear you. You're unmuted, but I can't hear you. Uh, can, so, can somebody say something to me? Hilda, where are you? Miss Hilda. This is Iman. Oh, yeah. Hi, Iman. N nice hearing your you? voice. Yeah, welcome back. Thank you so much. You're, you're in New York City, right? No, California. Oh, California. Okay. Where, where in California? Where, where? We're in County, San Francisco. Oh, okay. You're up there. Okay, cool. Go ahead. I'm 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 here. Oh, I just wanted to to test the the voice for you. So, it's working for us, but Ingna seems to be having trouble. Yeah. Right. Okay, great. I wasn't sure if it was from my end or or not, but uh thanks. I appreciate it. No problem. I do have a question though. Okay. It, it, okay. it may or may not be related. It's okay. up to you. Okay. It got. Um, it came into my mind when you were talking about uh, individuals that are great healers or shamans or um, those types of characters. Um, in your opinion, when we're going through our journey of inwards and self discovery and uh, to be united or at one or at peace. The, the topic of opening your third eye, it seems to be like all over this new age community. Is that um, when do you get to be reassured that you have reached maturity in this spirituality is is opening your third eye a prerequisite for this or is it just big hype by uh the community the new age community and whatnot i want to understand is it something that we have to work on or is it something that will just come uh while you're in your inward journey and and growth Okay, that's wonderful. Th thank you for asking the question. That's a good one. Um, it appears, and, and pay attention to this word, uh, it appears that it's something we're working on. It looks like it. Sometimes we're consciously working on it, and sometimes it's getting worked on. And uh, it's basically you don't reach full self-realization if your third eye is not open. But then it's the all-seeing eye. So it's the higher vision. It's the eagle eye that you start to begin to see things from a higher perspective of a different way, different place, with a much bigger level of understanding. 
So we can get to the needy greedy parts of it of saying, okay, I'm working my on my own third eye. I'm doing third eye activation. By the way, I do have a third eye activation training uh, video uh, that you can f find it on my website. But um, basically, the if we're actively consciously we're working on the third eye and we're doing different exercises or we're doing diet whatever it is but overall there's a um the subject of third eye when we're talking maybe i should be talking about this more in detail next week but the a lot of people think that third eye activation means okay your third eye opens up and all of a sudden then you're having all these psychic abilities or you're able to do time traveling uh, or having access to um, trans-dimensional beings uh, and things like that these things do happen uh, or could happen in various ways when you're having your third eyes opening up but that's not exactly the goal when it we in ultimately when we're talking about third eye activation or when i view it from this point of view today when i'm looking at it is for me third eye activation it's a value is far more into an expand, expanded vision that it has helped me to a much greater sense of awareness than I am this person I got all these emotional issues my third eye is opened up, but it's limited. Now, let's say I've developed some healing abilities or uh, psychic abilities, but emotionally I'm still a mess. So what a lot of people that I've seen in the community are mistaken is they want their third eye to open up, but there's still this self-awareness mechanism of, of looking at themselves and becoming aware of their reactions, emotional reactions or, or mental reactions. They're avoiding that part. They're missing out that part and not recognizing it. So they think third eye activation is a prize, is that I learn how to get my third eye activated now this is a trophy now this is a um, I can use this power for personal gain I, I got my third eye activated now I'm going to manifest uh, money I'm going to manifest a new partner so they're missing out on that from that point of view is it making any sense uh, Iman Yes, thank you so much. It actually makes a lot of sense and reassurance for me uh, personally. My other, my other inquiry was, in your opinion uh, or in your guidance, while we're uh, daily meditation, um, you mentioned several classes back um, that to be aware of the triggers, what triggers you. So in our journey, besides our daily meditations and exercises, when we're going through our regular um, lives, when something triggers us, what is your recommendation right there when we notice that something triggers us? For instance, for me, um, let's say my 10 year old does something, spills the milk on the kitchen counter and it aggravates me and I notice it. And then I work on, it's okay, it's no big deal, it's not real, blah, blah, blah. What else 
do you recommend that we do when we notice certain things like triggers? Right. Um, it's also the recognition of your aggravation is a part of the totality. And if you get angry or you just yell at him, that is also acceptable. I've been working not to do that. <laughs> you know, first comes that self-awareness. Self, you First you become aware that you're getting aggravated. Okay, which majority of people, they're not... They just get aggravated. There is no self-awareness of it. Then they get angry and they snap back at the child, right? So, and they're being parent. Then awareness comes. Now there is an awareness that you get aggravated. So, and you respond to that, whatever that is. Maybe you suppress it or maybe you snap back at him. Then there is another step after that, is that you realize that even that aggravation and that snapping back at the, the child is also a part of the totality, and that's okay too. But now there is awareness there. So this kind of aggravation and snapping back is different than when there was no awareness. Right. Is there something we need to do be in addition to the awareness? Like what comes after awareness, I think, is what I'm asking. What What do I do when I'm, I'm aware? Now it seems to be like I'm constantly working on my awareness. So I'm aware, but then I don't know what to do with this awareness. Okay, so I'm aware, and then what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Then, then the next step is you realize that you surrender into it and you relax into it. Because it will take care of everything. And it will provide and bring, present anything that you need at any given moment. So you just surrender to it. You just pull back, you just sit with it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, is it making sense? Did I answer your question? Do you feel satisfied? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, very much. Thank yeah. You so much. Exactly. Great. Yeah. Wonderful, intelligent questions. Thank you. So tomorrow we're going to have our uh, shamanic healing circle and there's still space for if anybody wants to sign up, you can go to my website, uh, go to the calendar events and click on the event. You scroll down and there is a button that where you can uh, register. Uh, on Friday, we're going to start the self Awakening Mastery Workshop and uh, and it's very much related to the topic of today and we still do have room for uh, anybody who would like to join in. It's a three-day workshop. It starts from 9 a.m. till 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. Four hours each day and uh, the self mastery workshop is I'm going to be helping you uh, equipping you with the tools and helping you to learn how to become the master of your mind how to be able to hold the reins reins in your in your hands instead of sitting on this powerful wild horse that runs everywhere and you can't control it and it, you suffer from it because at any moment you may fall off the horse and break your neck and that's what the mind does it takes you everywhere a lot of places mostly past and future and it makes you suffer 
But once you become aware and learn how you can observe the mind and separate yourself from it, then everything starts to change and this incredible powerful horse becomes your servant and it begins to serve you. So we will also be using active meditations. I have some wonderful active meditations set up for you which helps us to raise our vibrations to a higher frequency. And what happens is change happens when you're able to raise rise your vibrations to a higher frequency and you're able to sustain the state. You're able to stay here, not falling back. So the active meditations that I've designed for this work is specifically aiming at changing things within you in the cellular memory because what we do in therapy we're trying to implement changes but changes don't take place in cellular memory so the memory is still in the cells so what we need to do is changing the memory by raising vibrations to a higher frequency and sustaining this level, learning how to sustain it so we don't fall back into the old patterns, which is very easy to do. And that's the, the goal. And that's what we're going to be doing. So either I'll see you tomorrow or or both tomorrow and over the week, uh, weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And if not, uh, we're going to continue the Academy uh, next Wednesday, same time. Thank you for joining me. Um, all of these broadcasts are going to be on my YouTube channel. And the YouTube channel is Zaratustra. 5D and make sure you subscribe to it. We're continuously, regularly uploading new videos on our YouTube channel as well as my podcast. Uh, all of these uh, um, uh, events, our recordings of the Academy uh, goes on my podcast that you can uh, listen to it. It's almost by the next day or next couple of days it's up. Uh, those of you who are on our system on the Zoom, uh, you will you receive an email from us and we'll send you the copy of this recording. Um, and sometimes there is gifts, there's meditations that we continuously uh, produce and we put it on my website. You can visit my website, uh, zaratustra.tv and uh, see what's going on. We update the website uh, regularly with brand new programs, events, medita free meditations, videos, uh, whatever that we can. Um, also, if you have any questions or comments, you want to contact me, you're welcome to write to me on uh, at uh, info at zaratustra.tv. That's our email, info at zaratustra.tv. And the website is zaratustra.tv. I look forward to seeing you again. Sending you lots of love and light. Namaste.